So we'll start out looking at air conditioning equipment by looking at a DX system. So this represents the simplest type of air conditioning system using the vapor compression cycle. And some of us may be familiar with an evaporator inside the zone and a condenser outside the zone. So DX, in this case, refers to direct expansion. So the supplier is in direct contact with the refrigerant equipment as opposed to something like a chiller that has chill water in between those two loops. And the direct expansion refers to the fact that it's a vapor compression cycle, which, as we'll see, uses an expansion process to cool the refrigerant. So here's an image of the evaporator and condenser equipment that we're probably used to. We're going to dig into that a little bit. But again, schematically, just try to think about those loops and how they interact with air. We define refrigerant in the last series in this way, and when we talk about refrigerant, we're talking about typically R134A or R410A being pressurized, sometimes in a vacuum state, but sealed inside this loop running between the evaporator and the condenser. So we looked at the saturation charts last time for refrigerant specifically for this reason, to prepare us for understanding and being able to chart these processes as we look at how the refrigerant moves around this loop. So we're going to try to chart what we're seeing schematically with what we see on the saturation diagram. And there's going to be four main components that we talk about in the vapor compression cycle. So the first is the compressor, and that's responsible for pressurizing the refrigerant in this loop and moving it around as a byproduct, there's going to be a little bit of heat added as well. Let's keep that in mind. The second location or piece of equipment that's going to see this refrigerant is the condenser. And this is the part that typically sits outside and has a fan blowing air across it to use the ambient air as a heat sink to get rid of the heat from the compressor and from the system, from the zone where it picked up the heat. The third piece of equipment is the expansion valve. And in simpler systems, this could just be a pinch in the pipe, but typically it's, it's an it's electronically controlled valve that is metering out how much refrigerant is actually going to the next phase in this cycle. And that happens because of the pressure change associated with upstream and downstream of this valve. And just because of the laws of physics, when you have this pressure change and you expand this refrigerant and you have this big pressure loss in the system, in a closed space, in a pressurized loop, the refrigerant is going to cool down. So on this chart between 2 and 4, you're going to have that temperature drop because of that expansion valve. And when you get to 4, which is the evaporator, that's where you have the heat in the zone picked up by the refrigerant that had been cooled in this evaporator that now is evaporated back to a vapor state and ready to be compressed and sent back to the condenser. So we're going to make some connections between the equipment that we see, schematically how we might represent this, and then what it looks like on the saturation chart. So the next lesson, we're going to go step by step going through this, this, these different legs of the process. But remember that we're, we're always building off what we did in the loads and processes section when we're talking about an enthalpy change at a specific point in this process.